Hello and happy Friday, Fry Yay. I'm Coy Wire. Welcome back to CNN 10 and welcome to Phoenix, Arizona. I'm here for the men's NCAA basketball championship and the final four, which tip off this weekend. My goodness, it is beautiful here. Love this place. All right, we've got three more days before the solar eclipse happens, and there's a lot of anticipation building for this awe-inspiring moment, in large part because a total solar eclipse like this one won't be visible again in the United States until the year 2044. How old will you be 20 years from now? During the solar eclipse on April 8th, more than 30 million people in the U.S. who are located along the path of totality will potentially have their view of the sun completely blocked by the moon. But location and weather are key. Our Kristen Fisher has more on this celestial spectacle that many of us will get to experience. A total solar eclipse like this one will not be visible from the United States uh, again until 2044, so 20 years from now. That's why we're seeing so many people scrambling to try to find the best weather and get in position to see this on Monday. Um, there are a few other things that make this eclipse uh, really unique, and the first is the length of time for totality. That's the moment when the moon completely blocks out the sun, and that's that's when day will literally turn to night, so dark that the stars come out, nocturnal animals come out. Uh, that is how dark it gets. And so that moment of totality for this eclipse is much longer than it was in previous eclipses. At the longest point, it'll be about four minutes and 30 seconds. So that's a good amount of time to really get to soak in the power of nature in our solar system. Another really unique thing about this eclipse is the fact that it just happens to coincide with a period of peak activity on the surface of the sun. So during that moment of totality, things like solar flares or coronal mass ejections uh, are much more likely than in previous eclipses and could just make for some really cool viewing. Uh, but of course, with any eclipse, but this one in particular, uh, the weather is always a factor and unfortunately, it's not looking like it's going to cooperate in large parts of the United States along this path of totality. Texas and Arkansas, really uh, the weather not looking great there, but places like Southern Missouri and Indianapolis and upstate New York and New England, the weather's looking pretty good there. So uh, as always before an eclipse, the eclipse chasers, the diehards are trying to find that best weather viewing condition so that they can see this eclipse. Because again, if you don't see this one, it's gonna be 20 years uh, before you get to see something like this if you live in the United States. Kristen Fisher, CNN, Washington. Pop quiz hot shot, which one of these artists has won the most Grammys? Taylor Swift, Shakira, Beyonce, or Stevie Wonder? Queen B, Beyonce is the correct answer here. She's the most awarded artist in Grammy history with a record 32 wins. Music is an art, and it's so important to so many of us, right? But what happens when artificial intelligence replicates or replaces our beloved artists' voices? It might be a good topic of discussion for you and your friends. Does AI change the way you perceive the songs and voices you love? How does it change the music industry? Who all does it impact? Is AI a threat to the music industry, or what good might it bring? More than 200 artists, including Billie Eilish, Stevie Wonder, John Bon Jovi, Katy Perry, and more, say yes, artificial intelligence is a threat to the music industry. In an open letter organized by the nonprofit Artists' Rights Alliance, these artists are asking AI developers, tech companies, music platforms, and digital music services to stop the use of artificial intelligence, saying that it devalues the rights of human artists. CNN's entertainment correspondent Elizabeth Wagmeister has more on the artists' growing concerns. This is the biggest show of support that we have seen from A-listers against AI, which of course is a growing concern in Hollywood and beyond. Stars like Katy Perry, Stevie Wonder, John Bon Jovi, also the estates of Frank Sinatra and Bob Marley are calling to stop AI from replacing 
human artists. They say that voice cloning will essentially take away work and take away compensation from singer songwriters, rights holders. Now, this is not an issue that is going away anytime soon, right? The technology is here to stay. And now what's going to happen in Hollywood is what do we do with it? How do you protect these artists? We do see some legislation happening. This is an issue that is uh, going to Congress. We just saw Tennessee was the first state to pass an act to bring some rights and protections to the artists. But we also have artists who appreciate AI. Paul McCartney recently said that he actually loves the technology because last year the Beatles were able to release what he says is their last song by taking a track that was recorded by John Lennon decades ago and using it for a new song. So again, very innovative technology, but can't take away from the work and the bottom line for all of these artists. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10 is going to a horse that has some serious rhythm. We've all heard of a rocking horse, right? But how about a horse that is rocking? I'm talking about a head banging rocker from Canada named Pretty, who's got a serious penchant for metal. CNN's Jeannie Mose has more. Come on, it's party time. How does this Canadian race horse named Pretty party? She's a head banger, but only to certain songs. Metal was her like go-to head banging music and she loves it. <laughs> her groom, Autumn Purdy, noticed the heavier the metal music, the more the horse would head bang. Yeah, I looked to my barn manager, I said, do you see what she's doing? We turned the music off, she stops. At Boger Farms in Ontario, they tested country music. Maybe she turned her butt to it, but her appetite for metal was obvious. She feels like she's sort of on beat. She always is. It's incredible. No matter what song we play, slow jams, she's slow, heavy songs, she's going with the beat. Sometimes she gets overexcited. Her online fans call her a rocking horse. Her groom plans to post weekly music reviews with ratings based on headbanging intensity or lack thereof. This horse could sing, she'd probably sing herself. Horse. Ginny Moose, CNN. New York. Hey, Larius. Now it's time for the main event, so it would behoove me to show some love to you. Mullenberg South Middle School in Greenville, Kentucky. Rock on, baby. And to our friends at Central Aroostook High School in Mars Hill, Maine, giddy up. And thank you for subscribing to our CNN 10 YouTube channel and for spending part of your day with us. On Monday, we're going to have a special edition of the show focused on Monday's eclipse. And we're going to also have a special live stream event as the total eclipse creeps across the North American continent. Have an awesome weekend, everyone. Make someone smile. Remember, you are more powerful than you know. I'm Koi. This is CNN 10. It's been a blessing to spend this week with you.